Introduction to Metallurgy, Mechanical Properties, Gary A. Pace, PECWI. Learning objectives. In this one, we're going to talk about the mechanical properties of metals and some a little bit of testing. Kind of give you some insight into what's going on with metals and some of the words that you and the vocabulary that you might encounter and some of the concepts. So some of the terms that we're going to learn here are tension, as in a tensile test. This is a type of loading. This is something being pulled apart. Shear. This is like scissors or something if you had a bolt and a hole on a bridge and the the two pieces of plate trying to cut through that bolt shearing compression this is something getting smashed we generally don't worry about this too much in metals but we do worry about it we worry about it more with concrete um, concrete's going to have a lot more compression testing than the metal side of the house torsion this is like a drive shaft something being twisted torsion bending well this is bending um, not too difficult to figure this one out it's just bending and then we've got fatigue okay let's talk about mechanical properties for a minute or two okay so we've got hardness strength ductility notch toughness elasticity fatigue strength, and creep strength. So all of these come into play in different industries depending on what you're doing. Um, hardness, strength, and ductility are going to be big in just about anything. Notch toughness comes into play for something that is going to take some impact, especially in cold weather. Elasticity, you want materials that, are a lot, that have good elasticity but not too much. You don't want it to be like copper where it's just like going to stretch and stretch, but you don't want it to be like cast iron where it's just very brittle and no elasticity. Fatigue strength uh, is, a is a material property where you have the ability to bend that material over and over and over in a cyclical manner. And then you have creep strength. Creep strength is the strength of a material at an elevated temperature. It would be like a steam line at a thousand degrees. You want to have good creep strength. For those types of situations so ductility is the ability of a material to change its shape without breaking to rechange retain the chain shape after the load has been removed so this would be ductility it's what allows um, let's say copper or steel to be turned into wire or nails or um, rolled out into plate ductility this is what is ductility. So why do we care? Well, mechanical testing, such as a bend test, is a good way to destructively test a test coupon for welding. I'm a welding engineer. And it, it's inexpensive, but it also gives you numbers so that you can evaluate the ductility and the soundness of the material. This is one of the tests that we do to check out and see if a weld has the required ductility that if it's going to meet the engineering criteria that we're looking for this would be an example of ductility and the bend test is also used to qualify welders um, but it's a cheap piece of equipment and it's a cheap and effective way to ensure that welded joints are going to have um, the required ductility in them this is why we care, and this is where you're going to run into this out in industry if you do cross paths in the welding universe. You might hear the terminology, a bend test, but it gets back to testing for ductility. The ability of a metal to deform reversibly under stress is known as elasticity. It means that you stretch it and it comes back. Elasticity. Some materials have higher coefficients of elasticity than others, and this is a consideration when we utilize those materials for engineering situations, for building structures or components. Um, metals will change dimension under stress, but will not deform permanently and will return to its original shape. 
That's what we talk about elasticity, kind of like a pair of socks or underwear. If it's worn by too big of a person, that underwear is not going back to its original size. Metals have the same issue in regards to loading and being stretched too far. It's not going back to its original size. Okay, so here's tensile strength. We got a little picture of two semi trucks pulling on each other. You know, and they've got a sample in between them. That's tensile strength. Tensile strength is defined as the maximum load and tension that you can put on something before it fails. How much you can pull it apart. How much force it's going to take to pull it apart. Um, it's also the ability of a material to be to resist being torn apart by opposing forces. That's what we're talking about when we talk about tensile strength. And it's measured in pounds per square inch. When we're talking about tensile testing, this is what our tensile test samples would look like. And we would cut them out of a weld test coupon. I'm a welding engineer, and to qualify welding procedures, you have to do a weld test coupon. And you do some bend testing, but you also do tensile tests out of this. So they'll cut out and then prepare these samples, these tensile test samples, to be pulled apart in a tensile testing machine. And that'll give us the tensile strength of the material. And if you're going to do, you know, other forms of tensile testing, it doesn't have to be associated with just welding, but that's my background. So that's the most that I've seen it from, the angle I've seen it from. So if our stress strain diagram, this is what our stress strain diagram looks like. And you can see on the right, we've got the little picture, the little GIF file, and our tensile samples being pulled apart. Well, when it finally breaks, that would be our point of failure. And that would be for a brittle failure, a brittle material. Here we have the same little GIF file on the right. Well, you can see that for a ductile material, there's a lot more stretching going on before the material finally fails. So we've got ductile and brittle materials, but you can see there's a difference in the um, stress strain curves for a ductile versus brittle material. Another mechanical property that we need to talk about is hardness testing. It's a direct measure of the resistance of the material to penetration. It's how hard it is. You know, like bread, we can stick our finger in it. If it's done right, it's not very hard. Or, you know, the table. Table's hard. We can't put our finger into the table. It's a hard material. Well, we've taken this to a scientific level, and we have hardness testing with scales and measurable, quantifiable um, properties for hardness, ways that we can measure how much penetration there is into a given material. It can be used as an indirect test for other things, such as tensile strength, heat treatment, conductivity, other things. So the hardness, for especially for materials like steels, is going to give us a lot of different information that we can utilize for uh, design purposes or failure analysis or you know predicting failures. Uh, there's a lot of different information that can be gleaned from hardness testing. And... The results are used for comparison. You know, that's what we utilize them for. So there's different types of hardness testing. Mohs, which is like, I think, for minerals, you know, Mohs scale of hardness. You know, diamond is like a 10 or whatever, and then there's other kinds of rocks that are like a 1, you know, coal or maybe some softer um, materials. Brunel is one you might see in engineering and welding as well as rock well, maybe Victor's. And then we've got micro hardness testing that we can do also. Hardness testing and tensile strength for steels generally are pretty reflective of each other. So as the hardness goes up, so is the tensile strength and vice versa. So this is just how this alloy system works for low alloy steels. Um, we add more carbon, the material gets harder, the tensile strength is going to go up. So once you start swimming in this pool and understand that you know there, there is a direct relationship between the hardness of steels and the carbon strengths and the tensile strengths, it, it makes it a lot easier to navigate. 
Okay, so we've seen this slide before, and like I said, a lot of this stuff gets circulated and recirculated, so I, and it doesn't separate itself. It's not like a linear thing where we can talk about, you know, the Civil War, and then we never talk about it again when we're talking about World War II. Anyways, um, increasing carbon content, it's going to increase the hardness, the brittleness, the yield point, tensile strength, and rusting. So, like I said, the heart, as we increase the carbon content, hardness, tensile strength, brittleness, all of that's going to go up. So is the yield point. Well, weldability is going to go down. means the more carbon we put in the material, the more difficult that stuff is going to be to weld. Plasticity is going to go down. How plastic that material is. Uh, ductility is also going down. It's going to be, the harder it gets the less ductile it gets, the more difficult it is to draw it into a wire or deal with it in that kind of situation. And air corrosion resistance decreases also. So we need to, as we're going on our little metallurgical journey here, we need to understand how carbon content comes into play with all of these things. And as we add more carbon, it's going to get more miserable to weld, but we're going to get hardness and better tensile strength. So it's all a give and take on this. What do you want and how? what parameters are you willing to live with? What numbers are you willing to live with on the hardness or, you know, the, the weldability and the lack of ductility? This is what our hardness test indenters and the shapes of the indenters look like. So you can see that the Rockwell indenters look like a little sphere, a little diameter steel sphere, like a little steel ball. That gets punched in there. Um, Brunel, they use a little ball. Vickers is a diamond pyramid. Noop is a diamond pyramid. So it just punches these hardness tests, just make an indentation into the material. And then there's a measurement made on the indentation and the size of the indentation and how deep it went. And then that tells um, the person running the test how um, hard the material is. You know, the deeper it goes in, the softer the material is. So, but anyways, this is what hardness test indenters look like. And there's a whole range of them um, depending on which type of test you're doing. There's a hardness conversion scale because we're, there's so many different scales. You've got Rockwell, Brunel, Vickers, Noop, all of these. So somebody has put together a conversion scale. So Rockwell C, all right, 60 or 25 Rockwell C is 253 Brunel and it's 266 Vickers. So it kind of gives you a general idea. And then they've also got them, and it'll take you on to tensile strength. So this is for carbon steel. So, you know, a Rockwell C of 25 is 125 KSI material. So um, it gives you a general idea of what you're dealing with. So summary, we covered a lot of ground. We're going to come back and hit a couple more of these um, in regards to mechanical properties. We didn't get them all touched, but... We touched on quite a few of them. Uh, you got any questions? Gary Pace, Katie Texas, TexasWeldingEngineering.com, and there's my email. If you have questions, shoot me an email, and I'll try and answer any questions you have on welding and or metallurgy.